Praise the Lord and welcome to this Father's Day worship service and also known as Reverend John Wesley Sunday. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let us remain silent before him. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart. I will recount all of your wonderful deeds. I will be glad and exult in you. I will sing praise to your name, O Most High. Let us pray. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for bringing all of us together today to worship you, to sing praises of your name and lift up your name up on high. As we have gathered here to observe the Father's Day and the John Wesley Sunday, we thank you, Lord, for giving us and in our lives the role models of fathers and also in the history of Methodism, the leadership of John Wesley, Reverend John Wesley. Father, as we have gathered here, we want to submit the following time into your hands. We pray that the Holy Spirit will be with us and will move in and through us and will bless this worship service. In your precious name we pray. Amen. The opening hymn for today is O Worship the King. Let us sing together. Responsive reading for today is taken from Psalm chapter 78, verses 1 to 8. Psalm chapter 78, verses 1 to 8. Let us read responsibly. Listen, O my people, to my instructions. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old which we have heard and known, and our fathers have told us. We will not conceal them from their children, but tell to the generation to come the praises of the Lord and his strength and his wondrous works, 
that he has done. For he has established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he command our fathers, that they should teach them to their children, that the generation to come might know, even the children yet to be born, that they may rise and tell them to their children that they should put their confidence in God and not forget the words of God, but keep his commandments and not be like their fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation that did not prepare its heart and whose spirit was not faithful to God. May the Lord add his blessings to this responsive reading. As we continue with the worship service, let us go on to read the Apostles' Creed. Let us unite in this historic confession. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us sing the Gloria Patri. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. Let us bow our heads down and have the pastoral prayer now. Heavenly Father, we come to thy presence on bended knee, full of humility, some of us are burdened in life with certain struggles. We all come together, O Lord, as your children today. We all are looking up to you. And we have come to thank you. We have come to lift up your name and worship you. For all the times that you have shown your parenthood, your fatherhood in our lives. How caring you are. How merciful you are. How forgiving you are. We have been blessed by you, O Lord, by your presence in our lives. We pray for all the congregation members present today. All of them who are with their children, with their grandparents, with their families and their loved ones. We pray for each one of them. We thank you that you have given them a heart of commitment and that they are showing their children that no matter what happens, we always need to praise and thank God no matter what the situation is. We pray and we thank you for the protection that you provided to each and every parent child and elderly in our homes. You have provided us with all the needs of our lives. Whether the pandemic was there or not, throughout our lives, you have given us and supplied to us the gifts of food, shelter and clothing. We have never remained without a meal, O oh Lord, and we thank you for that. We pray and we want to submit our state into your hands, Maharashtra, which is 
the most affected today in india we pray for our city mumbai and we pray for the cm and all the leaders who are working hard so that this pandemic does not take a heavy or a heavier toll on the people we pray that thou will lead them and guide them in your wisdom and knowledge so that the right decisions at the right time can be taken and that we will come victorious out of this pandemic <coughs> we pray for india we pray for the people in our country we pray for the leaders of our country oh lord let not racism gender inequality caste or creed or religious biasness come between us at this point of time let the preservation of life the atmosphere of coexistence and the truth of love flow in each and every indian's heart so that we can lift each other up and assemble ourselves as a country once again we know that the country has broken under the pressure of this pandemic economically we are falling but more so oh lord we need to realize the mental and the spiritual impact of this why is this happening to us in what ways have we meddled with nature in what ways have we unforgivingly used nature lord let us assemble back together afresh a new with attitudes and mental approaches that have changed for the better and become a stronger country a stronger people stronger believers in you we pray o lord for all the churches for all the homes the worship centers which are looking today as a sabbath day we pray that you will bless their hearts and their minds to accept and to use the word of god that will be spoken today and that in time they will assimilate and use what has been spoken today as today we are also observing the fathers day sunday we thank you lord for all the fathers or the father figures of our lives those of us who have the privilege of having fathers and those who have the privilege of having father figures in their lives it is so important to god and those mothers who are also fathers to their children you have put into each one of us o lord the properties of being a father as we read your word and as we gain insight from your word we know that we will be able to absorb the characteristics that flow from you we pray that you will help us to always understand the significance of this day and how important it is for us to have fathers and to be fathers we also submit all the people who are feeling sick today oh lord all those who are under the weather or are not keeping well we pray that your hands of healing will touch them 
that you will comfort them and that you will not let them feel isolated. We pray for all the ones that are affected because of this pandemic that they will not be left alone. They will not be left unattended, but they will be healed through your blood and that they will gain a new life. And we pray for the souls of those that have departed. We pray for peace to be with them. And at alas, we pray for all the petitions and prayers that are hidden within our hearts. We don't know and we can't spell them out at some time. But we know that you can look right into our hearts and you can see them. We place all of these petitions and prayers into your hands and at thy feet. May they be answered in due time, whenever you feel that it is fit to be answered. I want to submit all of these things at your feet. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Let us say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. And the power and the glory. Forever and ever. Amen. A very good morning to each and every one. Today is observed as the Father's Day Sunday. Day where all our members are pondering upon and remembering the father figures of their lives and also appreciating them for what they have taught them and how they have been disciplined by them in their lives. Yes, indeed, it's a wonderful uh, way of showing love and especially more so in the church because we believe as God to be the overarching father in our lives to each and every one. And I always begin my prayers by saying Heavenly Father. So it means a lot to each one personally when we say Heavenly Father. And as a father, he provides to us all the needs of our lives. He knows whatever we need. And he knows when to give those needs at what time. And that is one of the most beautiful characteristics of God as a father that I see and I honor. We should thank every person in our lives who has stood by us as a father figure. We should thank every person who has acted as a father in our lives. Many single parents, single mothers have took up the role as fathers in their children's lives. And that has to be appreciated. Many of them have shown the way. And yet many relatives have been father figures to their children. Many friends, many elderly have been father figures to their children. And th that has to be appreciated today. Just a brief history. A day of honoring fatherhood we call as Father's Day was... Uh, influenced by looking at all the fathers of the society. In the Catholic countries of Europe, we they celebrated on the March 19th. But in America, they started to celebrate it on third week of June from 1910. So in these days, the family remembers the father. And we also have days for a mother's, siblings day, grandparents day and so on and so forth. But we should know that uh, according to the scripture portion that was read that a father has such an important role to play in a child's life, in a family's life. He is looked as a source of discipline, order, reason, logic. 
especially an example of God's character, fatherly character. Yes, today we lack many fathers who are struggling in themselves to portray these characteristics to their family. But we know that we have a God that is our father and who is listening to us and our needs. And that in due time, everything will be revealed and everything will be made to be clear in front of us. We thank the Lord for today that he has given us the privilege to have fathers, that he has given us the privilege to be loved by them, that he has given us the privilege to be disciplined by them in whatever ways that we went wrong in. And looking at that, I want to welcome our guest speaker for today. Our guest speaker for today on this wonderful occasion is Reverend Esther D. Jagat. She is the Assistant Vice President for Intercultural Affairs at the Ashbury University, has traveled to Uganda, Japan, Germany, and is working currently on PhD in Intercultural Studies. Her emphasis is on contextual theology. She serves on local, national, international boards and agencies of the United Methodist Church and as commissioner in the consortium of Christian colleges and universities. Special projects that she has been involved in are serving as an editor for the revision of the social principles of the United Methodist Church and member of the national research team on Christians and racial justice in North America. And she has created a beautiful name for herself that reflects on the Father's glory. And not to forget, she is the daughter of Senior Pastor Reverend D.G. Jadav, who is serving in the Mumbai Regional Conference. I was a member of the Robinson Church when at that time he was also the pastor. And I was blessed by his messages, by his presence. And I know that uh, Reverend Esther is going to give us the word of God that will truly enlighten us about the beautiful nature of fathers in our lives. I give the following time into Reverend Esther's hands. Let us hear the word of God from you. Thank you. Before we listen to the word of God, let us sing the hymn, Savior like a shepherd, lead us. Savior like a shepherd, lead us. Gosh, we need thy tender care. In thy pleasant pastures, feed us. For our use, thy foes prepare. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, thou hast bought us thine we are. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, thou hast bought us thine we are. We are thine, thou dost befriend us, be the guardian of thy way. Keep thy flock from sin, defend us, seek us when we go astray. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, hear, oh, hear us when we pray. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, hear, oh, hear us when we pray. Thou hast promised to receive us, poor and sinful though we be. Thou hast mercy to 
relieve us, grace to cleanse and part to free. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, we will early turn to Thee. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, we will early turn to Thee. Early let us seek Thy favor, early let us do Thy will. Blessed Lord and only Savior, with thy love our bosoms fair. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, thou hast loved us, love us still. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, thou hast loved us, love us John chapter 15, verses 1 through 12. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch of mine that bears no fruit, he takes away, and every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. You are already made clean by the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself, unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. If a man does not abide in me, he is cast forth as a branch and withers, and the branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you will, and it shall be done for you. By this, my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be full. It is a joy for me to share today with you from the Word of God. I am deeply grateful uh, to Reverend D.G. Zadhav, my dad, in extending an invitation to me uh, to share on this Father's Day. And so I am delighted and I'm thankful for this opportunity that is made possible by technology, and more importantly, uh, by the folks there at Robinson that have been working so diligently to provide online services for the congregations around, around the city. And so I am so thankful um, for all of you and for the work that you have done and continue to do to bring worship to the worshipers as we are stranded in this time of a global pandemic. Today we celebrate Father's Day, and as I have thought about this day, my heart and my mind uh, kept looking for a word of encouragement, a word of reminder of who we are as the Christian community. And so I have turned to John chapter 15, verses 1 through 12. In John chapter 15, verses 1 through 12, Jesus is making the use of yet another imagery to teach his disciples. In John 15, the imagery of the vine and the vine dresser and their relationship to each other is brought 
into light. In the biblical text, the reference to the vine or to the vineyard is used to describe Israel. It describes Israel in its relationship to God. As indicated in Psalm 80, verse 8, Israel is God's vineyard. That God brought out of Egypt and planted in the land of promise. However, in this chapter of John 15, Jesus refers to himself as the vine and talks about the relationship of the vine to the vine dresser. There are several things for us to take away from this passage, and I want to highlight just a few for us as we think about Father's Day, as we think about our fathers. May this imagery and may the insights of John 15 help us in understanding what God intended in the relationship of the vine and the vine dresser to be embodied in the relationship that a parent shares with their child. And in this case, as fathers share with their children. Right off the bat in John 15 verse one, we find these words, I am the vine and my father is the vine dresser. Jesus not only acknowledges his relationship to the vine dresser, but perhaps is pointing to the more significant reality that the vine dresser, who is God the Father, is the one who helps him grow. This is so important for us to remember because oftentimes we think that growing is our responsibility. It is our responsibility to grow, but God has a part in growing us as well. If you look up maintenance and upkeep of a vineyard, you will find that it is hard work. I didn't realize how difficult the upkeep of a vineyard is. The vine dresser is keenly aware of each and every vine, and because this crop, because grapes are an annual, they are an all year round crop, the vine dresser really gets to know every vine in the vineyard. As we celebrate Father's Day today, we are given an imagery of how God the Father, as the vine dresser, takes good care of each one of us. He is aware of our needs. He is aware of our personalities. He is aware of our weaknesses and our strengths. And as the vine dresser helps us to grow. But in order to help us grow, the vine dresser, as mentioned in verse 2, that immediately follows verse 1, provides two helpful functions of the vine dresser. The thing to take away from verse 1, I am the vine and my father is the vine dresser, is the truth and the reality that God the Father knows us so well, knows us so well, knows our strengths, knows our weaknesses, knows our needs, knows our personalities, just like the vine dresser knows about the vine in the vineyard. And so it is critical as we think about this relationship of father and children that it is important for the fathers to know their children and for the children to know their fathers. To have the sense of security that comes from being known so well and so fully is very important to each and every one of us. 
So just as the vine and the vine dresser share in this relationship of father-son, we are reminded in verse 2 that the vine dresser provides two very critical and important functions. Every branch that bears no fruit, the vine dresser takes away. That is a very important aspect that we often forget in Christian life or perhaps in life in general, that every branch that bears no fruit, the vine dresser takes away. In order for the vine dresser to help the vine grow, he must take away every branch that does not grow. A vine cannot grow with dead branches, and hence those branches must be taken away. God, our Father, takes away every branch in our life that does not bear fruit. This is a painful process and yet an essential one if, you, if we are to grow. Oftentimes, our lives grow branches that don't bear fruit and they must be taken away. These branches can be our thoughts, the way we think. These branches can be our actions, the things we do, the things we engage in. These branches can also be our behaviors that are detrimental to our own growth. And so it's critical to recognize that in this passage, the important function that the vine dresser plays is taking away every branch that does not grow fruit. And so God takes away every branch from our lives that does not bear fruit if we let him to. And likewise, a father carries the role, the parents carry a role of taking away the branches that don't grow fruit in the lives of their children. Thirdly, we recognize that another critical function the vine dresser provides or fulfills is that every branch that does grow fruit, he prunes so that it may bear more fruit. The beauty of the previous function, which was taking away every dead branch that did not grow, was to really create space for the branches that do grow. So in helping us take away the dead branches from our lives, our heavenly father and our earthly fathers do the important task of creating spaces in our lives where those branches that do bear fruit can continue to grow and continue to bear fruit. As I was thinking about this process of pruning, it became apparent to me that the process of pruning is quite difficult. It is difficult for the vine dresser, perhaps because he knows that it is going to hurt the vine, but only to help it grow. And then it hurts the vine because it does not realize that the pruning is going to produce something good, and that is more fruit. The knowledge of the vine dresser and the lack of knowledge of the vine both ex exemplify the challenge in this process of pruning. So as we have considered this imagery in John 15, specifically in verses 1 and 2, I want to relate this to what we celebrate today, Father's Day. As we celebrate Father's Day today, I want to consider this imagery, and I want us to see how it can be helpful to us today. 
It has certainly been extremely helpful to me because I can see how my father has modeled this imagery in my life after God, our Heavenly Father. I wish I had time to tell you the many stories in in the ways in which my father has exemplified and modeled his behavior, his character of being a father after our Heavenly Father. The first thing I want to connect or highlight for us is that my father knows me and I know my father. And what what do I mean by that? What do I mean by the statement that my father's My father knows me, and I know my father. You know, we live in a world where fathers don't know their children and where children don't know their fathers. This is a sad reality of today. Families are hurting because parents don't know their children and children don't know their parents. Thus, it becomes very vital that fathers get to know their children. And as fathers get to know their children, the children get to know them. My father always made it a priority to nurture me and my brother in faith and good character. It was so important to my dad that we learn to love God that we learn to become persons of good character, that from a very young age, he incorporated practices that helped us to become the people that we are today. And so I move into the second uh, takeaway for us from John 15, that my father disciplined us. So just as the vine dresser takes away every branch that does not grow fruit. My father disciplined me, disciplined my brother and I, so that we could become people of faith and people of good character. My father never let a mistake go uncorrected. He would remind us many times and in many ways the right way to be, but not just the right way to be, but the godly way to be and to behave. And for this, I am so deeply grateful because it is very true when the scripture says, train up a child in the way it should go and they will remember those ways for the rest of their lives. I am so grateful to my parents, both my mom and my dad, for the investment they have made in my life, in my brother's life, and honestly, the investment they have made in every life they have encountered. Because in every encounter, what they have done and what they keep doing is they help people to become persons of faith and of good character. Finally, So just as my father knows me and I know my father and my father disciplined me, my father also encouraged me always when I did the right thing. It is so important because similar to how the vine dresser prunes the branches that bear fruit because pruning is the process that cultivates more fruit on the branch, on the vine. And so my dad would always encourage me and my brother when we did the right things. And that only allowed us to understand what it meant to do the right and the good thing, to do the godly things, to be after the godly things. And so it is important for us as we celebrate Father's Day today to thank God for the fathers that we have been blessed with, for the lives they have lived and the lives that they live. I am mindful of the reality of our world that not everyone is blessed 
in having a father who emulates the godly father. I recognize the pain and agony of this reality, and so it becomes even more critical for members of the Christian community, for fathers in the Christian faith, to emulate our Heavenly Father, who has taught us, who has shown us, in and through the life of Jesus Christ, what it means to be a father who knows his children, a father who takes away every branch that bears no fruit, and a father who prunes every branch that bears much fruit. And so as I close this message today, I pray that we have found encouragement to look at our lives and see how we can live in this relationship of the vine and the vine dresser. And once again, it is my deep delight to be able to share with you today. And I pray that God will use these words to shape us, to inform us, to grow us, so that we may become the people that God has desired. And I thank God for my dad, for his life, for his investment, for his sacrifices, and for his life that has made my life one of faith and good character. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for our fathers. We thank you for the lives they have lived and for the lives they live. And we pray, O oh God, that you will pour upon them every good and perfect gift that comes from your holy hands. We pray, Lord, that you will bless our fathers with good health, with wisdom, with strength, and with courage to continue to help us grow. And I'm also mindful, God, of the fathers who may struggle to emulate what you have taught us. And I pray that in your grace and in your mercy, you will help them so that they too may emulate the godly fatherhood that is described for us in John 15. And Lord, I pray that your grace and your mercy will abound in each of our lives as we do our best to be the best reflection of who you are and who you have called us to be. We pray this in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise the Lord. I would like to thank Reverend Esther Jado for sharing the word of God from the gospel according to St. John chapter 15, the wine and the wine dresser. It is a wonderful message and I am really touched by her words and I hope all the members also watched this sermon or listened to this sermon would have been touched and encouraged. So once again, I also would like to wish all the fathers a happy Father's Day. And I also would like to remind you that this day is also observed as our Methodist Missions founder, late Reverend John Wesley's day. So it is a very historical day and we remember our founder John Wesley as our father for the Methodist Church. And so it is a adding factor. Couple of announcements. <clears throat> the regular Sunday service will be continuing through online service only. So every Sunday as you are meeting, please come and meet sharp at 10.30 a.m. We need to continue to pray for the grace of God to be upon the people, those who are going through tough time because of this coronavirus. 
we need to continue to pray to god to end this scenario the government has already given an announcement saying this lockdown will go up to june 30th we hope and pray that in the month of july god will show us a new way for us to get into the church but till such time we need to pray so that we will get the clearance from the government the members those who are celebrating their birthdays and wedding anniversaries are displayed here you can read the names and as we pray we will pray for them during the final prayer on behalf of the congregation and the pastor i greet them and wish them may they have a wonderful birthday celebration and wedding anniversaries the bible study is going on every friday through zoom all the members are welcome to participate the sunday school is also going on on saturdays please join them and youth are also meeting on thursdays so please follow the whatsapp messages and join us so that we will continue to grow in the word of god through the zoom service In closing let us all sing guide me o thou great jehovah Let us sing the closing hymn today that is guide me o thou great jehovah Guide me o thou great jehovah pilgrim through this barren land I am weak but thou art mighty hold me with thy the healing stream doth flow let the fire and cloudy pillar lead me all my journey through strong deliverer strong deliverer be the still my strength and shield be the still my strength and shield the verge of jordan bid my anxious fear subside death of death and hell's destruction land me safe on canaan side songs of praises songs of praises i will ever give to let us pray god of heavenly father we want to thank you and praise you for this wonderful day we thank you lord for enabling us to come together once again in this manner to sit in your presence to sing praises unto you bring our prayers and petitions before you above all to listen to the word of god as we have celebrated the father's day We thank you Lord for the word that has come to reveal as the truth that is hidden in the book of John's gospel the relationship between father and Jesus Christ how metaphorically explained to us and how the father is disciplining the children how the father is 
pruning, helping, and enabling this child to bear fruit. Help us, Lord, as fathers, we stand in your presence to apply these things in our lives. You are given children in our hands, and it is our bounded duty to see that these children grow, glow, shine for your glory. There are parents, there are fathers who are still struggling to chastise their children, to discipline their, their children. But today's word of God has given us a very clear cut guidance. We thank you, Lord, for Reverend Mrs. Esther Jadav, who is in the United States, serving in the Madhuri Church. And we thank you, Lord, for her life and the examples that she has shown from her personal life, how her father and mother played a key role in bringing them up. Enable us, Lord, to raise our children. One day they will also stand up and testify that we have got wonderful father, wonderful mother. Lord, we continue to pray for the situation, the virus that has been growing or going very fast, spreading very fast. We pray, O Lord, only you can control, only you can put an end to this pandemic situation. We pray for the patients, those who are admitted, that they would get good treatment and they will be discharged. We pray for the ones, those who really affected and died, and the families, those who are really at loss, would be comforted. We pray for the life in general, that the whole city, the whole country, the whole world is still unable to come to the normal life. We are asking you, Lord, to bring the situation to normal. We want to start our worship in our churches. We want to see that our children go to their schools and colleges. We want to see all the members resuming their work. And we know that you have got your own perfect time. But as church, we pray, Lord, that would enable us to come back to the normal life. We pray for all the dear members, those who attended today's service both our own congregation members and visitors and friends. We remember to pray for all the members who are celebrating their birthdays, that would stretch forth your holy hand, bless them, give them all what they needed for their life. Bless them physically, spiritually, mentally and socially. Lead them and guide them. May they have a wonderful time. We also pray for the week that is ahead of us. May this week bring blessings to all of us. We thank you and praise you. We are also grateful to you for our founder, Reverend John Wesley, who have really labored to see this Madhurism grow. And today it is standing as one of the leading churches around the globe. We want to continue to maintain its um, ethos and its vision. Help us, Lord, to be faithful to you and your word. Thank you once again. We pray this prayer, the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, love of God and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, may rest and abide with us all, both now and for evermore. Amen. Thank you one and all for attending the online service. Hope you had a wonderful time. Hope to meet you all next week the same time. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you. God bless you all. Amen.